Today, we're going to talk about lab testing, and we're going to go in depth. I bet you have gone to your doctor and said, test me for everything. Test my hormones. I feel terrible. And they come back, and they call you, or they put the message in the portal that says, you're fine. Everything looks great, except you don't feel fine. It's the whole reason you asked to get lab testing. And in fact, you're not even really sure what they ordered. So get your pen, get a piece of paper. We're going to go into it. Hi, my name is Dr. Carrie Jones. You're going to want to hit that subscribe button because I know hormones can feel like herding cats, especially when we talk about labs. And I don't want you to miss a single video. Okay, labs. Basics. When we're talking about basics for lab testing, I'm actually not talking about hormones. And this is what can get really confusing because you say, test me for my hormones. And they run something called a CBC, a complete blood count or a comprehensive metabolic panel. And then they come back to you and go, yeah, it's all normal. A CBC and a comprehensive metabolic panel are considered basics and they're great markers. They tell us a lot of other things, just not hormones. So your CBC, your complete blood count, are your red blood cells and your white blood cells. Super helpful if you have an infection, if you're getting like a screen for anemia, if you've got a lot of allergies and we're trying to see which cells are, are high, a viral infection, we need the red and white blood cells. A metabolic panel is gonna break down your glucose. So make sure you go fasting when you get this blood drawn. It's going to look at your electrolytes. It's going to look at your liver enzymes. It's going to look at your calcium. So we get some cool markers, but again, not the hormones you're probably thinking of. Now, on top of that, what else is considered a basic are usually your cholesterol panel. Oftentimes, they'll go, you know what, you're that age. Let's go ahead and run your lipids. So go fasting. You're going to get a total cholesterol, an LDLC, an HDLC, and your triglycerides. Now, hang on there, because we're gonna go into a little more in depth than what you should probably also ask for. I believe that lipids should be a lot more in depth than that. And especially as you get above 40, and for sure, as you're really getting close to menopause or postmenopausal, your lipids can go haywire. You may find your cholesterol goes high, your triglycerides go high, and you just weren't expecting that. So we're gonna talk about that in a sec. Now, another basic I commonly run is a vitamin D. It's not everybody considers it a basic. Not all insurances will cover it. But low vitamin D sadly is so prevalent, whether or not you live in a sunny location. So I do add in a vitamin D. I also look at a thyroid panel. Now my thyroid panel and somebody else's thyroid panel might be different. My thyroid panel is thorough. I look at a TSH, a thyroid stimulating hormone. I look at a free T4, a free T3, and the thyroid antibodies. There are two main thyroid antibodies that we're probably going to run, especially if you have a family history of thyroid issues, Hashimoto's, thyroid issues when you were pregnant. One is called the TPO, thyroid peroxidase antibody, and the other is called a TGAB, thyroglobulin antibody. Now, we can get more advanced in thyroid. You might run a reverse T3, an RT3. You can run a total T4, a total T3, all of these are great markers, but if I'm doing my basic for thyroid, I'm doing a TSH, free T3, free T4, and of course the antibodies, especially if you have family history, personal history, issues when pregnant, things like that. Now, all of these, I know I told you to get pen and paper, all of these you can find below in the notes. I have an entire free ebook just for you that has all this information. But I want you to keep listening because I'm gonna give you little like clinical pearls, little snippets that can be helpful as you write this down and fill this out. But I do have a free ebook just for you below. All right, let's keep going. Another basic I think is important is called a hemoglobin A1C. It's kind of a look at your fasting glucose over the last three months. Maybe not fully three months, but that's kind of what they say. Now this is important because as women get above 40, they tend to have a worse glucose. We tend to become more insulin resistant and therefore have glucose problems. Now that brings me to insulin, a fasting insulin. I believe that an insulin should be part of basic lab work. Unfortunately, it's not. It's often considered more advanced. But high insulin is a big reason or risk factor for metabolic syndrome. You know, metabolic syndrome increases your risk for like visceral fat gain and heart disease and type 2 diabetes and high blood pressure and things like 
we don't want. I don't want you to be at risk for any of these things. So imagine if I ran a fasting insulin at 40 as part of your screen, and then every year or every so often after that, I'm running a free insulin. Man, I could pick up on metabolic syndrome or metabolic disease or anything so much sooner. See, I view lab work all about prevention as opposed to waiting until you fall off a cliff and then do something about it. All right, let's move on. Now, I don't call these the basics, but they're more like the extra basics, like the extra testing that could be super helpful. One is vitamin B12. So you can run an actual serum vitamin B12, or you can run something called a methyl malonic acid, an MMA. Either of those, totally acceptable. Your doctor may choose one or the other, or if you are ordering yourself, choose a B vitamin B12 or a methyl malonic acid. Then there's the iron panel. Now you may be wondering, like, why wouldn't you run this in the basics? Again, it would depend what your presenting symptoms are. If you said, oh my gosh, I have super heavy periods, I have a history of low iron, or I don't eat a lot of meat at all, or I'm a vegetarian or vegan, or I have a history of you know, hemorrhoids, so I have um, blood in my stools, I'm starting to think, oops, you may not have a lot of iron. And then I would move the iron panel up into the basic panel. So, but if you're like, no, 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 none of that, none of that's me, but it's been a long time, five or 10 years since anyone's checked your iron, let's do an iron panel. And it's literally called that, an iron panel. It has things in it such as, shocker, iron, but it also has ferritin, it has something called transferrin, it has something called TIBC, but it's a nice little package panel that you can run. So if you're like, you know what, yeah, I think I have an iron problem definitely request an iron panel. Now, then we can get into those thyroid markers that I mentioned before, total T4, total T3, reverse T3. You may choose to move them into the basics, especially if you have a current or past history of thyroid issues or a strong family history, or maybe you don't. That's why we might call these the extra basics. Then we can get into inflammatory markers, like an HS. CRP. Sometimes it's written in reverse. CRP, HS. HH, HS is high sensitivity. This is an inflammatory marker. Sadly, it doesn't tell us where the inflammation is coming from. It just tells us, hey, you've got inflammation in the body. So if it's above a one, literally the number one, if it is above the number one, you have inflammation. We have problems. And it's like really affecting this marker. Now, unfortunately, if the marker is below one, it doesn't mean you don't have inflammation, it's just not affecting this marker. And I know this is where it can get frustrating and confusing, but it is kind of the inflammatory marker we have right now. We're hoping that like with more information and you know research and whatever, like we'll be able to hone in more on inflammation. But you know if you're inflamed, you don't feel well. <laughs> so if your HSCRP is above one, Houston, we have a problem. Okay, now we get into the advanced cardiovascular. There are some labs that have it's called like an advanced cardiolipid panel. And it's going to have things on it like an APO lipoprotein B or an LP little a, or it'll have like LDL particle count and size, HDL particle count and size. And it has all these other like really cool markers, something called an APOE, APOE. Now, all of this information helps me understand like how significant is your cardiovascular risk? If your cholesterol, like basic numbers are good, but these markers are not, then unfortunately you're kind of like, like a hidden layer down that we just can't see right away on the basic screening tests. But that next layer down, I'm like, oh gosh, you do have cardiovascular risk. We need to be aware of this. So I always pretty much check, I'll be honest, this advanced panels, I think as women hit into their 40s, they should be doing these panels. The basic panel isn't good enough anymore, especially once her estradiol starts declining. Once you start skipping cycles, once you start going longer between periods, I know your estrogen is going down and that can play a big role in what your body does with cholesterol and how it's made, how, it's, how you get rid of it. And I've had more women than I can count, more women than I can count say to me, I've always had normal cholesterol my whole life, carry my whole life. And all of a sudden I had hit 45. I hit 50. I, I went through menopause early at 40 and my cholesterol went through the roof. My triglycerides went through the roof. So I don't want you to be a number. Don't be a statistic. Heart disease is still the number one killer of humans. And I want to absolutely mitigate, minimize, 
deal with that risk as much as possible for you. So even as you head into your 40s, or if you're listening to this in your 50s, maybe you're listening in your 30s and you already have high cholesterol. Like we have to get right on top of that. Let's not progress to heart disease. Let's not progress to things like diabetes, type 2 diabetes, or you know, high blood pressure. These are the risks that can go with heart disease. Okay, now we can get into autoimmune markers. If you suspect or your practitioner suspects any kind of autoimmune, they may run markers known as like an ANA, an anti-nuclear antibody. If, they, if you're having a lot of joint issues that you've had and it's not related to estrogen, there is, there is that syndrome, the musculoskeletal syndrome of menopause as coined uh, by Dr. Vonda Wright and her team. But if you're like, no, 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 I have, I have other autoimmune, or I've had this a while, or I've, they've always been kind of suspicious of rheumatoid arthritis, then you're going to get the rheumatoid arthritis markers. So I actually have a list in the, in the free ebook um, of all different autoimmune markers that could apply depending what's going on. Now, let's get into hormones because that's the juicy part. There's a couple of different ways you can test hormones. A lot of people start with blood work as the initial screening for hormones. So we're looking at like you get a blood draw for estradiol. You get a blood draw for progesterone, for total testosterone, free testosterone. The testosterone binding, which is called an SHBG, sex hormone binding globulin. Usually that's those three kind of come together. Total testosterone, free testosterone, and then SHBG sex hormone binding globulin. You can run a DHEA S, S stands for sulfate. You can run a DHEA no S. Now the issue here is when do you test hormones? Because if you still get regular cycles, ideally you're gonna test these hormones five to seven days after ovulation. So if you're like, well, I'm, I'm about a 28 day girl, then do you still ovulate? And if you can tell, does your mucus change? Do you track any of your symptoms? Are you wearing a wearable that tells you you ovulated? then you'll count five to seven days forward and go to the lab. And that way you'll know that it was, we call it mid-luteal, that you went and got your labs drawn at that time. And we'll know exactly what reference range to put you in. But let's say you're listening to this and you're like, I have no idea. I don't know where my hormones are. I haven't had a period in months. Or maybe you're fully postmenopausal. In that case, just go get your blood drawn. <laughs> you just go to the lab. Now, do be aware though, we all have to be aware. If you have no idea because things are very irregular, then the results are going to be a, like appropriate for you on the day of the blood draw, but it might not give you as much information as you were hoping for. The good thing is the testosterone markers and the DHEA markers, if you choose to get those run, they don't change so much with your cycle. Like they don't really like skyrocket at ovulation. They bump a little bit, but not a skyrocket. So you can kind of get testosterone and DHEA really any part of the cycle. It's estradiol and progesterone. We have to be very time specific in the month. If you are having irregular cycles, you will often see on social media or in the guidelines why they suggest, hey, don't even test. If you are really irregular in perimenopause, you do not need to test your hormones. They're specifically talking about progesterone and estradiol. It's still a good idea to test your thyroid hormone, your vitamin D hormone, right? You could test your testosterone hormone, your DHEA hormone, the, the, your insulin hormone. There are other hormones that are very important that you could test. But specifically, progesterone and estrogen get wild um, in that in, in between part of perimenopause. Now, of course, this everything I'm talking about is blood work, but there are other methods such as dried urine testing or 24 hour urine testing or saliva testing. And I do go into that a little bit in the ebook. So if you are curious about those and the extra information that they give, um, then definitely you're gonna wanna click the link and sign up so you can read all that information. No, I hope that was helpful. Obviously, I can't cover every single lab known to the universe out there, but I wanted to give you an explanation of my basic versus maybe what's considered basic in traditional medicine. A red and white blood cell and a metabolic panel are very helpful. They're not going to tell you your hormones. They're not going to tell you very much information at all about your, your cardiovascular risk, right? They're not going to tell you much about your thyroid at all. Full stop. So if you really are going into the office and saying, I would like full testing, I want comprehensive testing, make sure that you are actually submitting a list of what you would prefer, what you would like, because you may just get back the red and white blood cells and the metabolic panel. And maybe, maybe you will get the cholesterol and maybe, maybe, maybe you'll get a TSH, the thyroid stimulating hormone. And again, I'm like, ah. 
we can get more comprehensive than that. You don't feel well, and I want to figure out what's going on. So the great thing is you can be, you can write all this down. You are now educated. You are now empowered, and you're going to be proactive. So get the free ebook on All About Labs. So it's right there. Use these clinical pearls. Understand hormones are 100% like herding cats, but keep tuning in because I'm here to help.